Hello there. In this review, we'll compare two lenses, the Canon EF 50mm f1.4 USM and the Canon RA 50mm f1.8 STM. If you're considering purchasing either of these, this review will provide insights into their strengths and weaknesses. Let's start by examining the apertures and then the focal lengths of both lenses. The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens has a wider aperture than the Canon RF 50mm f1.8 lens. The EF lens has an aperture of f1.4, while the RF lens has a maximum aperture of f1.8. The larger aperture of the EF 50mm lens gives it an edge over the RF lens. It's worth mentioning that a smaller F number represents a wider aperture, which results in improved light gathering capabilities. We'll also cover later in this review what the EF and RF bit means if you're unfamiliar. Now, the remaining figures in the names of the lenses specify the focal length, which represents the lens's magnification. Both lenses have a focal length of 50mm, which is neither too broad nor too narrow. A common characterization of a 50mm focal length is that it appears to be close to what our eyes naturally see. Since both lenses have a fixed focal length, they are referred to as prime lenses. So why use a prime lens instead of a zoom lens? Aren't zoom lenses more versatile? Prime lenses tend to produce sharper images due to their fixed focal length, which would be the benefit of using one. Okay, so which is the better focal length? Different focal lengths can result in unique outcomes as they have varying distortion levels. The 50mm lens has a more narrow field of view, meaning it will capture less in the frame compared to a photo taken with a 35mm lens taken from the same spot. Despite this, 50mm lenses are popular among photographers due to their versatility. We'll delve deeper into this aspect in later parts of the review. It's crucial to remember that different focal lengths can affect the look of the subjects in a photo because of their distinctive distortion characteristics. For instance, a person's face may appear slightly altered when captured with a 50mm lens compared to a 100mm lens, even if the photographer moves back to balance out the extra zoom of the 100mm lens. In general, 85mm has gained recognition as the ideal focal length for portrait photography, as it is believed to create the most attractive representation of the subject's face. 50mm lenses are often considered a close second due to their proximity to 85mm. This is not a hard rule, but it's something to remember. We will explore the specific advantages of each lens in more detail later in the review, but for now, let's discuss portability. How easy are these lenses to carry and transport? The Canon EF 50mm f1.4 lens measures 73.8 by 50.5mm or 2.9 by 2 inches, and weighs 290 grams or 10.23 ounces. Meanwhile, the Canon RF 50mm f1.8 lens measures 69.2 by 40.5mm, or 2.72 by 1.59 inches, and weighs 160 grams or 5.64 ounces. Both lenses are similar in size and weight, with the EF lens being heavier. Both lenses are well constructed with metal mounts, but they also have a somewhat plastic feel. The RF lens has a slightly more refined feel than the EF lens, but not by a significant margin. By the way, you can find affiliate links below if you're interested in finding out the current pricing for these lenses in your area. Okay, so what can these lenses do? Let's start by covering their minimum focusing distance. The minimum focusing distance refers to the closest distance at which a lens can focus on a subject. For example, when trying to take a close-up picture of a flower, as you move closer to it, you might realize that, eventually, the camera won't be able to focus. In simpler terms, a lens with a shorter minimum focusing distance allows for a closer subject distance and thus the ability to capture more intricate details. Generally, a shorter minimum focusing distance can provide more flexibility and creativity in your photography as you can get closer to your subject but it also depends on the type of photography you are interested in. It's essential to consider these factors when choosing a lens that suits your needs. In the case of the EF 50mm f1.4 lens, its minimum focusing distance is 45cm or 17.72 inches, while the RF 50mm f1.8 lens needs at least 30cm or 11.81 inches. Okay, so how sharp are these lenses? 
I'd say the RF 50mm f1.8 is sharper overall between these two. Generally, you'll find with more affordable lenses that, when you zoom in, sharpness may not be even across the frame. Generally speaking, lenses tend to be sharper in the center than on the edges. It's worth mentioning that while sharpness is essential, it is not the only factor to consider when choosing a lens. Factors such as bokeh, focal length and versatility also play a significant role in the overall usefulness of a lens. Right, what about vignetting? Both the EA 50mm f1.4 and the RF 50mm f1.8 lenses are susceptible to vignetting. However, this optical defect can easily be fixed in post-production. Also, I personally quite like some vignetting in my photos, as I find that it tends to give them more depth. What about chromatic aberration? Both lenses exhibit some, but I don't find it an issue, as you generally have to zoom in quite a bit to spot it. Chromatic aberration usually manifests when taking photos in low light conditions, such as during sunset. It shows up as a color bleed along straight edges in the image. Again, most people won't ever spot this, but knowing that both lenses exhibit it is essential. Practically any lens can, though more affordable lenses tend to show it more. Right, what about IS or image stabilization? Does either of these lenses have it? Nope. It's not a feature that you'll usually find on budget lenses, except for the Canon EFS 18-55mm kit lens. Okay, what about autofocus? If we look at their names, we'll see that the EF 50mm lens has USM, and the RF 50mm lens contains SDM. Let's see what this means. The SDM motor is typically found in more entry-level lenses, and is known for being quiet, smooth, and accurate for shooting video. On the other hand, the USM motor is typically found in higher-end cameras and lenses, and is known for its speed, accuracy, and relatively silent operation. Both motors are quite good options, but the USM is generally considered a better choice for fast action and sports photography, while the SDM is an excellent option for shooting video and other quiet scenes. By the way, if you find this video to be helpful, don't forget to leave a like. Right, so what cameras can I mount these two lenses on? The Canon RF 50mm lens is specifically designed for Canon's RF mount cameras such as the Canon R, R5 and R6. In contrast, the EF 50mm f1.4 lens has a different mount system, designed for use with Canon's EF and EF-EFS cameras, which are more commonly found in budget-friendly options. However, it is possible to mount the EF 50mm lens onto an RF body such as the R5 using an adapter, a link to which can be found down below. If you're interested in checking out my reviews of the Canon R or Canon R5, links are also provided below. Additionally, you can access these reviews by clicking on the card in the top right corner. Neither the Canon RF 50mm lens nor the EF 50mm f1.4 lens is well suited for vlogging. Despite their high price, both lenses have limitations in this regard. Firstly, neither lens is equipped with built-in image stabilization or IS, which can result in shaky footage. While mounting either of these lenses on a camera with in-body image stabilization can help mitigate the lack of built-in IS, there's another issue to consider. Both the Canon RF 50mm lens and the EF 50mm f1.4 lens have a relatively narrow field of view, meaning that even when using a Gorillapod, the 50mm focal length may be too zoomed in for handheld vlogging. If your goal is to create content from home with the camera mounted on a tripod, the lack of image stabilization, or IS, won't be an issue for either lens. With a stable tripod setup, both lenses will provide excellent image quality and produce beautiful bokeh. Okay, so what are these lenses designed for? What if you want to do portraits? Both lenses are suitable for portrait photography. However, the EA 50mm f1.4 lens has a slight advantage in this category. It has a slightly wider aperture, allowing in more light and enabling shooting in a broader range of environments. Additionally, it produces somewhat more luxurious bokeh. What if I want to do street photography? Either lens can be used for street photography, but it's essential to exercise caution, especially if you have a more expensive camera setup. Pro-looking gear like either of these lenses can sometimes draw unwanted attention from onlookers. Okay, what if I want to photograph products? Both the EF and RF 50mm lens would perform well for product photography, it just depends on which camera you want to use them with. Right, what about landscape photography? 
Again, both would work rather well with no real difference. How about fashion photography? Both lenses are well suited for fashion photography as they both work well for portraits, making them equally suitable for fashion photography. What about documentary style shooting? Both the Canon RF 50mm lens and the Canon EF 50mm lens can be used for that purpose. However, the EF 50mm f1.4 lens has a slight advantage in this regard, as its wider aperture lets in more light, making it slightly more versatile. What if I want to capture sports or wildlife? Neither the Canon RF 50mm lens nor the EF 50mm lens is ideal for capturing sports or nature, as they cannot zoom in close enough to the subject. For event or wedding photography, either lens can be utilized. Given that you'll mostly be doing portraits and detail shots, both lenses would work very well. How easy are they to use? Both lenses are of decent quality and provide a pleasant shooting experience. They both have smooth manual focus rings, allowing you to adjust focus precisely. Right, so how long can I expect them to last? Both lenses have metal mounts, which bodes well for their longevity, but neither has weather sealing. Many photographers, including myself, like to add an extra layer of protection for the lens element by using a UV filter. I use Sigma ceramic UV filters that stay on my lens all the time, having been added right after I bought the lenses. Although Sigma ceramic UV filters can be pricey, it's worth it for the added protection of my more expensive lenses. Having a filter attached to the lens also eliminates the need for lens caps, although they can still be used as desired. When buying filters for these lenses, it's crucial to consider their filter size, which differs from their focal lengths. The EF 50mm lens has a filter size of 58mm, while the RF 50mm lens filter size is 43mm. Remembering this is essential, as many people initially mistake filter size for focal length. I hope this has been helpful. If you're curious as to how much these lenses cost where you are, I have affiliate links down below for your convenience. If you'd like to check out more of my reviews, you can either have a look down below for relevant links, or click the card in the top right corner. Do you have any questions? Feel free to comment down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. If you'd like to purchase any of the items mentioned in this video, or see how much they cost in your country, I have links below where you can view them. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.